the processing of traumas is something that, especially in the case of major traumas or repeated traumas, really should be carried out in concert with an expert trained clinician. That is a psychologist or psychiatrist who's trained in helping people work through traumas. However, even if you're working with somebody who's expert in processing trauma, there are specific tools that you can use on your own to accelerate that process. The self-directed protocols for working through trauma have a lot to do with how we think about, but more importantly at times, how we talk about those traumas. Dr. Conti emphasized the fact that one of the ways that we hold ourselves back and indeed can exacerbate the negative consequences of trauma are the ways in which we modify our language to describe those traumas. And what he said, which is so important, is that oftentimes we don't allow ourselves to use language that's as big as is necessary to explain that trauma and the impact of that trauma on us and on others. In fact, many people start to, you know, relegate their language to more passable in a given sentence or passable in a given conversation. Now, what we're not talking about here is the idea that, okay, you know, screaming at somebody else about your trauma or using a lot of four letter words is necessarily the best way to process that trauma verbally. However, we are talking about allowing oneself either in spoken form or in written form to really allow the magnitude of a given trauma to be expressed with a fair degree of intensity and language that can capture at least some of what that trauma represented for us or for others. Now, as Dr. Conti pointed out, all too often we do the opposite. What ends up happening is people will experience some sort of trauma, either major or minor, maybe single or repeated trauma. And rather than being comfortable talking about it, rather than using language that captures at least some of the magnitude of that trauma for them, people start to talk about that trauma less frequently, they start to distract themselves to think about other things instead of talking about or thinking about that trauma. And what happens is that trauma roots into our unconscious mind and starts to impact us in negative ways. Now, those negative ways include increases in anxiety, disruptions in sleep. In fact, one of the common ways in which trauma manifests in disruptions in sleep by way of rooting into our unconscious is that people will wake up at 2.30 or three o'clock in the morning let's just say after several hours of being asleep, and immediately they're thinking about that thing that happened and they're upset about it. The idea is that when we push those traumas down, when we don't talk about them with people that we trust, when we don't have a way to consciously process those traumas using language that at least partially matches the magnitude of the impact of those traumas for us, it's as if it's being thrown back in our face over and over. Also, sometimes traumas will root their way down into our unconscious and then they will resurface in the mode of compulsive or obsessive thinking about that thing or perhaps other things. Again, the unconscious mind has a interesting and complicated number of different ways that it defends us in ways that it, you know, can create denial, distraction, that we might get hyper-focused on work as a way to not in our environment and just really trying to focus on that because it's much easier to process and handle that than these traumas. I think this point about really making sure that we allow ourselves to verbally process and emotionally process that trauma in a way that there's room for using language that captures some of the magnitude of that trauma and how it impacted us and others is going to be very important because otherwise what ends up happening is that we tend to adopt feelings of guilt and shame around those traumas simply by not talking about them, by having them go inward 